So this is Scarlett. Scarlett's got some personal space issues. She likes to push through. She likes to do all things. First and first and foremost, when we're doing something with a horse, the thing is that we have to do is we have to protect our personal space. Our personal space is that bubble we want around ourselves. Depending on the person, some people want it three feet, some people want it four feet. And what we want our horse to start to stop doing is to stop walking through it and walking on top of us. Now, the way that we're going to do this is not by getting all me and nasty at Scarlet, but just about setting some simple boundaries. So, for Scarlet, we're going to say, I need you to back this off. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our lead, and can we back our horse up off our lead? What we're doing is we're going to start nice and softly. She's not paying attention. As soon as she comes forward, we're going to go right up, bump Scarlet back. No Scarlet is already licking her lips, going, hey, there we go. Want Scarlet to realize that we're taking control of her feet. Move this back. There you go. Good girl, Scarlet. Back. Thank you. There's the Scarlet we want. Now, doesn't matter what we're doing. Now, one of the reasons we're holding the stick right now, because Scarlet likes to push on through when something goes wrong, and if Scarlet did, what we're going to do is we're going to up this energy, we're going to go move this back. Get this back. There we go. A couple of different things. Regardless of what it is that we do or how we're going to do it, I want our horse to realize that, put this over, that there's more than one way we can do anything. So one, can we take Scarlet, move her back. There's some bugs, the flies bugging her. I don't care. I'm bigger than the fly, I should be more annoyed. So, if we can move her back off the lead, that's one. Can we come up to Scarlet and say, hey, let me touch your nose. Now, Scarlet starts to bounce all over the place, guess what? I haven't asked Scarlett to do anything yet. I'm not going to release her nose until Scarlett stands still. Thank you. Then I'm going to give it a little rub. I don't want Scarlett to think that she can just avoid me every time that she feels like she can, wants to do something. Pick that nose back up. Say, hey, get it back up here. Give her that little rub. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to push Scarlett back. We're going to hold the nose, start to squeeze. As soon as Scarlett goes back, we're going to release. By rubbing, we take that sens sensation away from the nose. It's kind of like, now Scarlett's trying to nibble here. I'm going to say, don't nibble, Scarlett. I'm going to go back to doing it. Scarlett is all about Scarlett. So what we have to do is we have to keep showing Scarlett that it's not her, it's us. That makes, makes the choices. Take that little squeeze. Now, notice I've got my rope just loose, loosely over my arm here. We're just going to... I don't want Scarlett to get the feeling that she's being held here. I want her to realize it's her decision to be here. Brings her head back down, we pull it back up. Squeeze the nose, there we go. Now, bring Scarlett back up to the front. Always pay attention as to where you are and what you're doing, when you're doing it, because we don't want to put Scarlett into a situation that she can't get out of. We always want Scarlett to feel that she has options. So we're gonna do that again, we come back here. Scarlett starts to move her head around, we're gonna correct the head. Put our rope back up over our arm. Get Scarlett to relax, do a little rub. Now we're going to ask for our step back. Not pushing, just give it a little squeeze. Starting to move her head around, we're going to put our hand back in it. I like to do what's called an open hand policy. Although I've got my hand in here to stop her head from moving, my hand is actually open. I don't want to go hold here, force not, not have her not move at all. I want her to have the option to move. What I want to do is correct so that she learns not to. There's the difference. If all we do is constantly hold and make the horse do something, when the horse doesn't learn it, they're just going through the motions. Hey. Now, Scarlett decides that every time I do this, I should go backwards. Then guess what? I'm going to stay with this until Scarlett stops. Notice that Scarlett's starting to toss her head. Little bump there. Don't do that. Don't go backwards. Come on up here. Step. Thank you. Scarlett's starting to get all pushy. Back this off, Scarlett. There you yeah, go. Start to hold her squeeze. There. So Scarlett's been allowed, Scarlett's about six to nine years old, and she's been allowed to do her own thing here for quite some time. So guess what Scarlett thinks? Scarlett feels that Scarlett is in control. And what we're going to say to Scarlett is, guess what? Smart, not behave. Thank you, Scarlett. There's the attitude we want. Reward the attitude you want. Don't reward the attitude you don't. 
Simple little things of, remember, the release teaches, not the action. So if I want her to learn to back up off the lead, then when she backs up off that lead, I need to stomp. Same thing with our hand. Bring her head back over here, put her hand on there. As soon as she stops, I release that pressure, give a little rub. Now I'm not asking her to back up, so I'm going to stop her and say, don't back up. I didn't ask her to back up. Step up. Thank you. Don't push through. There we go. Each and every time that Scarlett tries to do something, and I don't allow her to just walk all over me and do it, she starts to learn something. So, why do we want to back her up first? Because guess what? In our personal space, when she walks in, I want to be able to get her out. I want to be able to say, get this off of me. Now, we're going to do another one. Nice simple one. Scarlett starts to move. She says, I'm going to move back. I says, I don't want you to move back. I just want you to stand there. What we do here, put the rope back over our arm, we bump up to the chest, we give a little rub. You'll find there's like a, a hollow point there. Now, she's going to keep on moving back as well. We're going to go with her. And he says, no, no, no. I haven't asked you to move yet. So we're just going to stay with her. She's going to start to avoid and say, don't avoid. She's going to keep on going. Don't go. Thank you. Don't go that way. There. Now she's standing still. She's trying to avoid. We just stay with her. All we want her to do right now is to stand still. Notice I haven't removed my hand. Okay, now she stopped to give a little rub, and there's our chest. There we move her. Don't. Just allow it to go because Scarlett's decided that every time you touch her, I'm just going to move away. If we do that, Scarlett's going to start to decide that Scarlett's in control. And we don't want that. We want Scarlett to. Do what we, what we want when we ask, not just because she thinks that's what we want. We're going to come back here. We're going to do it again. She's there, let's move it. She goes, well, why aren't you stopping? Because I haven't asked you to move yet. It's like, well, you're going really well backwards. And we're going to keep going, keep going. Move the head over. She's going to go up against the wall. And There we go. Now we're going to ask. There we go. Stop. Get this over. Start to ask. There we go. Stop. Bring Scarlett back up here. We don't want her to get to the point that she thinks that she can now. You notice that Scarlett's coming in on me here. Get your elbow up there a little bit. Bump, bump, bump. Push this off. All these little things. This is why we're teaching Scarlett. Get out of my personal space. Here's the scoop. We have a horse that's walking all over us. One of the things that we wanted to work on the first thing was can we get the horse to back off the pressure? But as you can see, even though we've done some, some, some simple moves of being able to back the horse off of this, can we get the horse to back off of this, our horse still walks all over us. The instant that we stop or we're doing something, he, she just done some piles on through She says, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to go over there. And all of a sudden she's decided that she's in control of her feet. She's moving around, she's doing her thing. If I want to stop her, do you see that switch of her tail? She's going, who the heck do you think you are? Well, I'm going to explain to Scarlett who I am. And the first thing that we're going to do, and this is one of the things that I want folks to start to do, fix the issue at hand. The issue at hand is, get this off of me. I am boss hog out here. It's not about being mean or nasty, it's about being in control. Get up, get off of me. Don't walk all over me. Thank you, Scar. That's so much better. Isn't that nicer? All I did was less than what the mayor, boss mayor would have done out in the field, say, boom, I'm going to bite your butt if you keep walking this close to me and pushing into me and doing this and that. And that's the only thing that I did to her. As I said, stop it. She's going to come forward and say, nobody told you to move your feet. Stand over there. And all of a sudden, she's looking to go, <gasps> Who the heck are you? And it's like, thank you. Energy is everything. If we have the energy to say to this horse, I am here, I'm in control, you will listen, don't move that, then that's what we're going to get from our horse. If we have this little quiet in the mirror and we're going, oh, you stand over there, don't, oh, please don't do it, then guess what? Our horse is going to walk all over us. 
You need to be a little bit forceful. You need to be out there. I don't mean forceful in the sense of physical force, but in attitude. If your attitude is such, stand. I'm not fooling around anymore. Get this back there. Move your butt over, because I didn't tell you to move your butt. So get that butt over. Stop this. Get back over there. Thank you very much. Now, this is not an excited horse. This is a horse that's going, huh, I should listen. Yes, you should. There's a difference. I'm not going to get out there and start chasing her around with a stick or something like that, because that would get her excited. I don't want her excited. I don't want her calm. I want her to learn to start to behave. Now, all of a sudden, we have a horse that we can start doing something with. Now, one of the things that I want her to get used to is this stick with the rope. I want her to realize that we can do things with this and not get all excited about it. Because guess what? We're going to need this. This horse is a horse that likes to move. And you know what? My arms aren't that long. So this is why we use the sticks that we do. Notice that she keeps coming in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to wiggle her back. If she doesn't go back, I'm going to push with this. There we go. It's not about me making contact. It's about me getting that energy up and saying, Scarlett, you need to move. Thank you. Good girl. Then, as soon as we get her back under control, we're going to go back to doing what we want. Now, I don't really care at this particular point in time if she's going to move her feet. I do, however, care that if she comes into my space when we're doing this, because guess what? She has the rest of the arena to go around here and she doesn't have to be right here where I am. So if this is really bothering her, she can go and tear around the rest of the arena. And here she goes, she tosses her head, getting all this attitude, I'm going to say, get this back. <gasps> you hear that great big sigh of release. That is her going, <gasps> okay, let's do it your way. I didn't get excited, didn't get mad, didn't do anything other than bump, bump, bad attitude, unacceptable, we'll stand over there and smarten up. And that's what we're trying to get to our horses. Don't get this, I'm running around like I've got ADHD, I've got all this adrenaline, I don't know what to do with myself. No, no, no. What we're saying here is be positive, be assertive. Don't go crazy, don't get all excited. I don't care if she gets excited. That's one of the reasons why we taught her to move off the first thing. That was the very first thing we showed her. So guess what? We can get her out of our personal place. Now what we're saying to her is, if I do something with you, you need to relax and listen to me. You need to get this back over there. Let's go to the other side. So now she's starting to go, well, I'm going to get all excited. This is a very dominant mayor. This mayor just thinks that she can walk all over us, do whatever that she feels like, when she feels like it, and if she does, if we keep allowing it, then that is exactly what she's going to do. If we take the time, there. And guess what she'll do? She will do what we ask. We want to be able to touch our horse absolutely everywhere we want without a reaction. The world is just all about how can I get my horse to walk it off of pressure, stop when I want it to stop, do this and do that? So why do we have to do this? Well, because if we can't do the simplest of things with our horse, if we can't move with energy and attitude around our horse, then how in God's creation are we going to get this horse to stop and listen to us? We need to start working with our horse at the issues that it has and work our way up to get to where we want to go. It is not about you and I, it is about the horse. And if the horse isn't in the picture, we're not going to get there. So we need to get this horse on track and go in the direction we need it to go. And if it's not, we need to stop and put it there. We need to take that time to put all these nice, simple things that should have been done ever so long ago. Why should this horse get excited? Because something touches his back legs. This is an issue. If we don't fix the issue, it will come back and haunt us. So let's fix that issue so we can move forward and do all the things that we want to do. And if we do that, then all of a sudden, we'll have the horse we want. Heaven forbid we should have to doctor this horse's legs and she doesn't want to have her back feet touched. Well, if we have a situation like that, then all of a sudden, we're going to have this breakdown in this hierarchy that we're trying to get going here about who's in charge of who and who tells who to do what. 
And then you're going to have this miserable, miserable horse, but just because they had the doctor's legs. Fix it. Fix it now. That way you can move forward. Thank you, Scarlett. You're doing so, so much better. Good girl.